Hey guys, this is JD and welcome back to my channel, but most importantly, welcome back to episode 2 of Hitman 3. Before we start, I just wanted to thank you for the support shown on the first episode. Um, hoping that you are all in good health, staying safe and away from all this weirdness that we're living in, in the moment. So, without further ado, let's do it, let's go. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? How are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlyle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlyle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlyle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children Younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now. Nice bike, mister. Nice bike. Nice coat as well. <laughs> anyway, we are here at the Carlisle residence, manor, castle, whatever. There's two guards at the gate, and the private investigator was trying to go in. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Hmm. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlisle. Okay, so he never met Madame Carlisle. She never met him. We need to somehow disguise ourselves and make everyone think that we are the private investigator. He's coming up. Some there's a gardener and there's a maid which probably she will walk him in and show him the way. That's the main entrance. We are not going through the main entrance. That's for sure. Is, is that an open window I can see there? Is that our way in? Because it says follow the private investigator. And he's just walking up. Yeah. Stay covered. 
in these bushes here. Yeah, it's definitely an open window. And it's definitely our way in. Let's wait for him. There's guards and what appears to be a butler who was not really interested in the guest. <laughs> he walked away. Obviously we're not going in that room. Is he coming our way? Most definitely. Let's hide over here. There's a door there and there's some lockers. Oh shit, okay, this is... This is it, this is it, this is it. Dump, dump, quick, quick, quick. Easy. And we are now private investigator. Can't remember. Can't remember the name though. And now we have to wait for Madame Carlyle. And she's coming. She's on her way. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. Okay. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madame Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? Let's get down to business, I my prefer friend. to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. Of course. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. Hmm. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. <laughs> Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. Mm. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. Usually, it's always the butler. In the a movies, it's room always murder, the butler. Mystery 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Okay. Why don't so you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Oh, I didn't realize he was still in his bed, but sure, why not? 
throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Okay. Uh, probably there's more clues, right? Let's start with the library. Oh, pull book. Secret entrance. This manor reminds me, guys. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Okay, this... There's a peeping hole that gives on the staircase. This manor reminds me of uh, the manor of Resident Evil 1. <laughs> gives me the same vibes. What's in here? Can we find something useful here? What's this? Peep. Okay. I don't know where that is. Or where does it lead to, but it's okay. There's nothing here we can pick up or examine. Hey, 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 hey. You've likely not exhausted the room for clues, 47. Okay. Okay, so we know that he was poisoned. What is... Uh, lots of plants. Could be a poison, a natural poison coming from plants, maybe? Lots of booze. Look at that. Do we need to pick up a kitchen knife? Why not? Might turn out handy. Oh, his laptop. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Unless he wanted to die with his boots on. <laughs> more liquor, more liquor, more liquor. Oh. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Okay. More clues to be found? I'm sure there's nothing inside there. Investigate Zachary's room, it says. So we're missing something. Maybe outside? Newspapers and more plants. Gardening tools. What's this? Leather. We can break the lock if we had a crowbar. There's nothing outside now. So something else must be here. What are what am I missing? What am I missing? So the laptop we've checked. There's booze everywhere. I think we found everything now. Let me try and get out of the room. No, there's something missing. Mister, what are you hiding? Mister. Maybe in the secret room again? Maybe we've missed something. And we go back in. We totally can. So, peephole. Nothing. Here. 
Nothing in this chest, nothing here. Oh, 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 oh. mention floor plan, that's what hmm. we needed. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Thank you. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. The butler is downstairs. Let's go. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. Let's start from you, mister. Can't we? Uh, I've just remembered I went for a stroll behind the greenhouse last night. Maybe that's where it is. Can't we interrogate him? So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Well, we'll play it by ear. Whatever comes first. Now, a good we'll idea. Yes. Someone we can interrogate. Patrick Carlyle. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I, I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. Mm, that's not all. What did you think of Zachary? Oh, creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexi used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God Daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married Mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. So, is that... Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. Uh, Fernsby. Everything points to him for now, but... It's too early. It's too early to say. So, so this guy was Patrick Carlyle, who's the son of Emma and Gregory, who I believe we have to inter in interrogate. Yet. Let's have a quick search here. Maybe we'll find something. No. Newspaper. Why do we need a newspaper? We don't need a newspaper. Um, okay. Now. We need to find the others. Please stay back. What? Let's go this way. You still... What's that? No. I don't want to get on to my old clothes. Not just yet.
What's in here? There's people talking. This guy. Hey, mister. Are you Professor mister? Edward Carlyle. Can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes. This dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He would never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by Mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff, all the company he had. Anything else I can do? Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean, apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. Okay, this guy is so broken, man. It wasn't him, definitely. You always led by example rather than by words. Um, someone here? Hey, Mrs. Ma'am. Rebecca Carla, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers and I. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Now, let's see. Patrick, Gregory's son, disappeared straight after dinner. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Okay. Is there anything else you want to ask me? I think it's enough. The only problem I have with you, ma'am, is that you were alone in a room and spent three hours on a conference call. No one can vouch... Well, people can vouch for it, but three hours on a conference call? Uh, in my books, it's a bit too long. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? <laughs> Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? The only company he had was his rare plants and mother, who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. 
Is that all? Anything else dead. you'd like to tell me? Nothing really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Hmm. Robich, this lady here, Emma, is Emma the Carlisle. Lady. Can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around eight o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Okay, so... She's saying she was in her room because she had a migraine, right? This guy saying that he had the night off with one of the maids. This guy was questioned. Rebecca was questioned. And this guy's alibi is confirmed. Um, okay, so these two were together. The boys were together. She was in a conference meeting, she was she had a migraine and she took off he took off with one of the maids. And the butler was seen coming out of Zachary's room this afternoon. Now it's uh, we still have to question someone. Probably Probably uh, we have to find either the maid that ran off with the, with the young guy or maybe check her room and check her laptop but it says question so I'm thinking we need to find the maid let's have a look here first What's this? It's a bust. I don't need a bust. What? With all these exotic animals. I mean, this guy, if he's so... Uh, he's so passionate about his plants and stuff. Um, probably there's a green room or something outside in the garden that we can check as well. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. There's nothing in this room now. Nothing of interest. Okay, so... We still have to find someone to question. What's behind this door? This door leads to the outside. What's here? Bathroom. Can we? No. Calm down. Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangements. Okay, this is the main area. This is the main hall. Let's go this way. What's here?
bathroom. Is it? Oh, it's a locker. Oh yeah, it's a bathroom. Pick up soap. Maybe someone washed his hands or something. Oh, what's this? Pick up wrench. Let's hide it. Okay, so. Uh, I could listen all day. Screwdriver. Fuse cell. Do we need a fuse cell? Probably not, but I'm picking everything I, I, I see. You never know what might turn useful or not. Um, this is where we came from, right? Is it? Yeah, bathroom. Into here then. Oh, hang on. This is a kitchen. And that's we've been there. Okay, so let's go to the kitchen. Apricot. I kid you not. And her son Patrick is just as bad. Just look at Rosie. He has no respect. Prank with girls like that. How are things coming along in Is everything ready for tomorrow? I don't know what I'm looking for to be honest. I'm just you know fishing for clues. Amy is a great match. You love her, she loves you. And now a wee one on the way. I'd say you're one lucky bastard. I don't need a propane flask. Um, I just stop thinking about Emma all the time, but she just makes me so angry. Okay, there she is. Tell me, she turned up. Rosie, tell me what you did That's last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I, you head the family I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. Okay. So we have... So 41 guests will attend the funeral tomorrow. There's still a lot to see to, but we're in good time, I think. A fake funeral tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. So we have There's a next in line to the throne. Having a baby. That is the door right? to Mr. Fernsby's office. That? I can't do that. This one? Oh, it's locked though. I would love to go inside. Maybe we can find the... We can't open it to the ranch, can we? No. No. I want to pursue on my idea that there should be a greenhouse somewhere. So I'm gonna find a way out. Maybe go to a garden? Find a garden? Let's have a look. What did I tell you guys? There it is, look. Definitely there was a greenhouse if someone was so passionate about his plants. Ethel looked everywhere. You've got to be kidding me. No power, no portrait. 
Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Uh, she expects the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it... So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. I have one. Cool. To be perfect. Disguise yeah, yourself as the photographer. Fuck's sake, uh, man. I, I guess we could do that. Good. I'll finish setting up, and then we'll grab the fuse just before you call down the fam. Good. Yeah, that's a good plan. Hey, wait a minute. Excuse me, you've dropped something. Where is he going? There. He's gonna stay here, but there's a security officer over here. Will he see us? We have to be quick, I guess. These guys saw us. We shouldn't have met. Okay. Can we drag this guy somewhere? There's officers there. Oh, there's a box. Okay, so probably we can drag the other body as well. Because someone will see him, right? Let's take the same round. Oh shit. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. We are. Now, I've seen a fuse box. to talk like the to the maid that just talked to the real photographer and uh, it doesn't appear to her that we're not the same person very realistic indeed or she's dope you must have quite the portfolio I'm ready for the shoot perfect I'll call the family down now then call them call them in the meantime I'm gonna have a look around Excellent, 47. Madame Carlyle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. I want to get into that greenhouse. Is it open? No, it's locked. Hmm. They're all coming down except Alexa right Carlyle. Ahead, She's always fashionably late, I guess. She's the lady of the house. In the meantime, I'm gonna have a look around again. Just in case it I miss something. Like I can't breathe in there. The tension is off the charts. Everything needs to be ready for the funeral. Oh, there's another entrance. Okay. Who's this? Yes, sure. Crowbar. But he, he was upset, mm. believing his sister was dead. That's our way in. That crowbar is our way in. Not now. Not now. Is Madame Carlyle here yet? I got up a little. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. We're waiting on the old lady. Yeah, she's here too. Down by the fountain. Hurry up. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see to today. I'll do my best. 
Maybe if you take your seat, ma'am. Listen, everyone. I understand that you have a lot of questions. Please be patient for a little longer. I will address you in the sitting room afterwards. Right, get in position. Come on. Let's get this over with. Get in position. Chin up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nose wreck. Stop dickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to lighten the mood. Say cheese, everyone. That's better. Is that enough, ma'am? That will be enough. Thank you. You need to spend the entire day here. Please, everybody, go to the sitting room. I need to... I need to change again, though. I want to stress that I expect absolute discretion about everything. I can help writing the eulogy for tomorrow. I can draw something up in 15 minutes. I just need some fresh air. Even the family, I've just interviewed them, all of them. And no one realized that the photographer and the investigator are the same guy. Okay. Now, we have to make sure no one sees us breaking in. There's a security officer coming. Why would you come my way? Jesus. Um, we can break into from here. Yes. Cool. Now, I have high hopes for this location. I'm sure we will find some things which are very, very interesting. It's a boat key. Okay. No one ever mentioned boats up till now. Really? Poisonous flower. Told you that the poison was made in house, naturally. Poisonous flower. Broken lab equipment. Uh -uh. It looks like it was recently used, though. A repair distillation kit with the screwdriver. Oh, the wrench. Okay. Produce poison. Pick up lethal poison vein. Okay, probably this is a different storyline. But it's cool, man. It's cool. Um, now, we have the... We can go and break in into the butler's office, I believe. Not I believe, I'm pretty sure we can do that. The only problem is finding our way back to his office. Because this place is huge. And I haven't done a mental note on where it is. So we have to look for it. Um, I'll wait till everybody is here. Shall we stay here and see what uh, good, man. Looking she good. needs to say? No. I don't care. Um, we spoke to this guy. I think we went down here. Yes, up this corridor here, I believe. Then we found the kitchen. Somewhere. Out from this door, there should be the kitchen in front of us. Yes. See? Ah. Good memory. I would say so, Mr. Fernsby. As long as the birds do make it. Fernsby is there, so no one will see us breaking in. Good, good, good. Let's see what we can find of interest here. 
Mention Master Key. Hmm. Mr. Ferensby's list. Zachary's half burned. Di Zachary's half burned diary. Zachary's diary. diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. Painkillers. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Uh, Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? I don't know. I think we shall... We shall blame people him. People were unhappy with the security at the gate. But why is safely there? She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. There's poison everywhere in this house. Jesus Christ. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Off we go. Still, we need to find a way. We need to find the case file and obviously eliminate Alexa. Something tells me it's a very long way to her office. Madam Carlyle's office. Please step inside. Madame Carlyle? He's not even here. Let's have a quick look before she comes in. She's here. Hiya. Hello, sir. Nice office, ma'am. Nice office indeed. Where does this lead to? Holy f what the f What the hell is this? So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Yes, ma'am. Please, go ahead. Accuse Mr. Fernsby. The butler, Mr. Fernsby, killed Zachary. Fernsby? Oh, you've got that wrong. He would never do such a thing. He is the most loyal man I have ever met. I found pills in his office that matches the poison that killed your brother. Furthermore, I found Zachary's notebook, half burned, in Mr. Fernsby's fireplace. It showed that Zachary intended to publish a written confession to a murder the two of you committed nearly 50 years ago. The murder of your older brother, Montgomery. That's outrageous. We did. Where are you going? Please. No, sorry. Sit down. Sorry. You were. You, you stood up. Thank you. I stood up. No. Where were we? That's outrageous. 
We did no such thing. No need to feign innocence. I know a killer when I see one, and my discretion is assured. The papers also described how Mr. Fernsby helped you stage the murder of Montgomery as an accident. I believe he killed Zachary not to be exposed as an accomplice to murder. Sweet Fernsby. Hmm. You are wrong, Mr. Whitmer. He did not do it to protect himself. He did it to protect the Carlisle legacy. Mr. Fernsby, like myself, understands that sacrifices must be made to secure stability and prosperity. Mr. Whitmer, I'd appreciate it if your findings never leave this room. I understand Fernsby's actions, and there is no need for them to have more consequences than they already have. Fernsby was very fond of Zachary, and I am sure his decision will haunt him to the day he dies. About your reward, have you considered an amount? I w oh, case file. I want file. the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Arthur Edwards? The constant. But that must mean you're... <sighs> I expected you'd show up. But you're not here to kill me. No, man. If you were, you would have already. Not the now. enemy of my enemy, I suppose. You can have it. You earned it. Thank you. Greetings, sir. Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, Please 47. Seated, Mr. Whitmer. Right. Where were we? You were about to give me the case file, ma'am. Oh, she opens the safe. Okay. The file you want is in the safe. Good hunting. Thank you. I need some privacy. Thank you. Oh, oh, she needs privacy. Good work, 47. She's That's going the file out on Arthur the... Edward secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Yes. Can I do it silently with the gun? Mission complete. Well done, 47. What the fuck was that? Okay, no one noticed. Because they're all giving... Okay, so I need to get the shit out of here now. As quickly as possible before they discover her body. And... Uh, shit. It's the fan. Body found. Fucking hell. I need a staircase. Staircase, please. I'd rather hear your stories. Hey, Maybe so we should get back to it. No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Where am I going? This way. Main exit. Oh, by the way, I told Kate about this text. So the lady of the house is found dead in the balcony. And they don't like seclude the place. Very interesting. Knowing that a private investigator just walked out after her and maybe he's the primary suspect forty seven they're everywhere go get out it's the Constantine shit what the fuck has just happened there Forty seven. 
Don't respond, just listen. Diana can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. And then there were none. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other, and I meant it. I'll look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now.